Hi and welcome back to my YouTube channel Software Testing. My name is Daniel Knott and I'm happy that you're here. Today I have another really exciting interview for you and I'm pretty happy that I finally got the chance to talk to Bill Cavadias from Wahoo Fitness about how they do software testing at Wahoo. For those of you who don't know who and what Wahoo is, Wahoo Fitness are producing hardware for bicycles, for cycling athletes, for runners, watches, um, cycling computers and also softwares where you can track your fitness, your workouts, your, your routes, your activities. So it's a really great product. I'm a cyclist myself and a running nerd myself too. And I do love to use these kind of products and I'm happy to know more about from Phil, uh, from, <laughs> from Bill, how they do software testing at Bahu. Bill is currently working there as the head of software testing or head of quality engineering, how he calls himself on LinkedIn. And yeah, enjoy the interview. Let me know in the comments below what you think about it. Thank you and enjoy it. Hi, Bill. Thanks for coming in today for the interview. Um, how about you introduce yourself to my audience? Hi there. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Bill Cavarias. Um, I, I work for Wahoo Fitness. Uh, Wahoo Fitness is an indoor-outdoor endurance athlete uh, product company. We, we do products for people that like to run long, long, long distances or ride their bikes for long, long, long distances. Uh, I've been with uh, QA for more than probably 15 years. I started as a sysadmin, fell in love with QA, uh, started working on, on really, really boring, boring products with the government and stuff. <laughs> and then ended up five, almost five years ago, joining Wahoo uh, in a startup. And, and that, you know, that kind of brought me, brought me all the way here today. Uh, in my role at Wahoo, I, I do own a couple of different different possibilities: QA, automation, DevOps, and, and our community community management platform, which is our beta and alpha and all of that stuff. That's that's more or less about me. Thank you. Um, speaking of Wahoo, I mean, I'm I'm a cyclist myself, a runner myself. I know what kind of products you guys are developing and shipping. Um, maybe you can give us like a quick overview like one or two minutes of about the products that you are building and what they're used for would be nice yeah so so it all started with uh well you know it it kind of the core of our business is the kicker the indoor trainer that's where indoor mm -hmm. that's one of the first devices that kind of made indoor training a thing for cyclists uh and from there we kind of we try to make an ecosystem around people that are athletes or want to train like athletes on how to record indoors or outdoors and improve themselves as, you know, improve their endurance, improve their longevity when they do rides and all of that stuff. Uh, this is a, this is a more niche market where it's, you know, 10% of people that ride bikes might be into, or like the people that it's not about getting outside and do a, quick round right right around the block mm -hmm. it's more about the person that wants to ride a you know 100 miles uh, or wants to do an ultra marathon these are the core users that actually come to wahoo the people that want to push themselves above and beyond triathletes ultra marathon mm -hmm. runners, cyclists and all of that stuff mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and for people to explain a kicker is something that you can attach to your bike and basically That's... you 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 detach your 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 rear bike your, your rear wheel and you connect your, your your half bike to the kicker to a machine, and that basically is able to to simulate like going up a hill, going down a hill, and is changing the yeah the the effort that the person has to put into the product. So it's a really cool thing. So it's it's and it's basically for for indoor activities, yeah, in in in, in long winters, long nights to, to exercise. The, yeah. the original name for that it was ass kicker, but they cut it down. <laughs> why <laughs> okay yeah that's great um that that's cool so so it's it's a hardware product that you that you guys developing but at the same time you also have software and and since my channel is focusing on software testing i'm curious on on how you guys develop and and test wahoo devices can you can you elaborate a bit on that 
Yeah, so uh, today Wahoo has a variety of different products from, from the embedded, the, the hardware side of things, uh, all the way to the training platform like Wahoo System, which is a training training mm-hmm. platform. Wahoo RGT, which is a, basically a Unity game that you can connect with your kicker and you see yourself virtually writing. Uh, and on top of that, we have our bike computers, uh, our the element rival, which is a watch, uh, sensors, different heart rate monitors. Um, we see, we try to see development and new product as one because we do all of that bits and pieces. We develop the hardware, we develop the software, we do the embedded work. We have our own sports science and our own data science team. So as as with every other company, right? We try to break our silos and see the things are one and integrate often and, and, and continuously. And that way we know that we're building, we get the feedback that we need to build the right product soon. Uh, so although the, the, the hardware team you know, makes a new bike computer and put, puts a new chipset in there to do a new antenna, the software team is in the loop at the same time and knows all that progress because they all need to integrate you know, the new drivers for that antenna pretty soon. And then we have to actually use and test the bike computer to see that it's mm-hmm. working as expected. So mm-hmm. it's, I don't, you know, in, in my past experience, we didn't, you know, hardware has always been a little bit more isolated, but in this case, we definitely try to collaborate and integrate as often and as much as possible together. So we can be in this fast, fast loop of learning a new product, and understanding how it works, and mm-hmm. that we're improving and trending towards the right direction. Yeah. Okay. I can imagine like working with so many different departments, and also like on on a different level, right? I mean, I I have a glimpse of IoT testing and embedded, but imagine like it's not only like working on embedded. Um, devices but also on on the apis the layers in between and also yeah, as you mentioned you you have the the watch and the the cycling devices they're communicating with satellites too so this also has to be established and has been yeah, tested uh, throughout the last cycle of of the software product and um can can you tell me like but what what's your current challenge in software testing those products is there something that's coming to your mind uh you know we have the technology challenges which is Bluetooth, uh, let's say Bluetooth has always <laughs> been a challenge in our industry. Uh, it uh-huh. has been a, it is a protocol that requires a lot of niche knowledge. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, there's a Bluetooth analyzer that, you know, if somebody knows how to use it and sees the video, please reach out to me. Like I'm still learning. Uh, there's all of those stuff that, and then the environment, right? Like you, a, a cyclist or, or a runner, you'll go out and you'll you might go out for miles and miles and miles Mm -hmm. and then you'll you'll pass under antennas and that might affect your gps and you might Mm -hmm. be really close to somebody else that they have a device that broadcasts on plus and every you know like it Mm -hmm. could be there are a lot of environmental factors that that just it's it's a lot of challenge there and that's Mm -hmm. more towards the 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 um external uh, products but it's also the, the products that we use outdoors but it's also the just because we're in a niche market and niche users uh, it's also understanding in what depth the details that we have in our products are important for our users mm-hmm. people if if their watts are wrong by five percent people will freak out so it's it, 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 <laughs> It's really educational for for us understanding how our users use our product in depth. We are a consumer product, mm-hmm. people get a product, but I, and I've seen anything from from somebody tying up a, a bike computer, which is a GPS device, on their skis and they're doing downhill with the <laughs> element to great crazy stuff. So it's really. When you launch a product, it's it's a it's a free go, right? Like anybody can use it the yeah. way that. The, on the QA side, it's really challenging to figure out how exactly they're going <laughs> to, and why is it not going to be the way that we thought it would be. Yeah, uh, that's crazy. That's a, that's a crazy idea. I haven't thought about putting my device. On please, the don't, please don't. Please <laughs> don't. 
I mean, I, as long as I don't report any weird bugs that you have to fix, right? <laughs> yep, yep. But but speaking of, I mean, this reminds me a lot about like it challenges what I have seen in, in mobile testing, right? With the GPS and the location based um, um, yes, it's environments that you're going to test. And um, the first thing that's coming to my mind is that that sounds perfect for beta testing and crowd testing. Are you guys doing something like that? In order to get feedback from from early early stage users and yeah, how do you collect the feedback? That would also be interesting. Um, yeah, so we have uh, we we do we do extensive extensive beta beta testing. Uh, mm -hmm. We are fortunate enough to have people that are really engaged with our product and they want to help. Mm -hmm. That's a I've seen other beta programs that you know you have to give motivation with money or like products or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. you know, we, we have all of that as well, but we have people that just raise their hands and they're saying, Hey, I, I want to help and I want to make this better mm -hmm. uh, because there, there's a definitely a generation of early adopters that will, will, will mm -hmm. love this kind of products. Uh, so we do that and we make sure that we always have user feedback coming, coming from outside um mm -hmm. also fortunate enough i would say probably 90 percent of waco employees are at some sort of either a triathlete or a runner or or a cyclist mm -hmm. which they're also in the loop and we have a process That's where it's perfect when a product is yeah. it's kind of kind of ready you know we we get more people from internal to use it and then we go to external users and then we get that feedback and we quantify and qualify it, and you know, we make sure we, we use all the net promoters, ratings to get, mm -hmm. more, uh, you know, at Prosa, are we ready to ship that? But also, you know, analyze data from the cloud with, you know, are we getting, you know, do we get dropouts? Are, are all of the, our numbers and all of our metrics are nine? Do we reach our proper SLAs and SLOs and all of that stuff? Mm -hmm. So I would say that, you know, beta is, uh, it's a core, core capability of Wahoo, and we mm -hmm. use it every every product or almost every feature that we're we're launching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's perfect. I mean, that's the best way yeah. you can collect feedback. And I, I think you, as you just mentioned, you are in a, in a, in a really cool uh, situation that you have like employees also being like cyclist runners to to use the product hands on. And I, I can I can just think about it like okay, before going in like my 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 running. I can just upload the latest uh, like firmware version to a device and just go out and and try out things and then come back and give the feedback to the development team. That that sounds perfect, right? I mean, but at before least I would love to do that. Yeah, before we launched the Element Rival, which is our triathlon watch, mm -hmm. we each employee averaged each walk employee averaged two workouts a week on the watch. <laughs> Nice. Before we launch it. So you, you kind of like get how much motivation there is around, in ter just internally, but uh, trust me, externally, it's even it's even crazier. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I have a, cool. we have a beta user that literally hacks our products uh, once in a while. And so good to actually like, he's, he does it. So like we, you know, we, we always kind of like any security, security risk is always being taken care of by our community. And we can kind of take the yeah. feedback and solve the things That's we perfect. want to become a problem. Uh, but also that, that you know specifically for QA, I also want to say that this is a my my role and how it evolved with, within Wahoo. It's actually a good example of how a QA role can evolve, right? Like QA for us is not about just you know this is my backlog, these are my tickets, and and I close stuff and acceptance criteria I met. But as a, when I first joined Wahoo, that was a you know, QA lead. My, I believe that a critical part of my role is making sure I talk with the users and I understand the issues that they're seeing. And I kind of get involved with the community, and I, you know, if we can crowdsource some stuff and get that feedback, and they can help me, uh, like that, that's awesome. That's that's great. Like it's just being open on a. This is not, you know, I'm not a gatekeeper, and I'm not the one that you know will say this is ready to go out, but. Let's use the tools that we have around us, which is users that are happy mm -hmm. trying an early version that might not be perfect, and they're happy to report back the bugs for you. And you, mm -hmm. you still need to work with them and understand what they're saying, and you know, clean up the get your logs and all of that stuff. But uh, it was it was really important to and 
Now, whenever I get, you know, we have new hires as well, I kind of shift that mindset to them that this is beta and community is a tool, right? Like you can use that and you can you can learn from it. Mm-hmm. You can understand users better and you can, you can free up your hands and have people help you do the work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's perfect. That's that's the right mindset that you should to 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 take like all the the opportunities that you have on on your daily basis and that the data that you can use to to judge the the, the product and to to make yeah to make it transparent the, the quality overall yeah and speaking of um, the testers that you have in your company is like how is like a typical day as as a as a software tester at the who looking so do you say okay you have let's say Mondays we use we go inside and do things like that. And Tuesdays we go all out and do some exercises or is there no such, uh, such a thing like a typical day at Bahoo because it's normal software development in the end, right? Using the same tools that we all use or is there something specific to it? Yeah, so it really is going to depend on the, the team that you're going to be in. Like, you know, we have it. We also have mm-hmm. testers that are doing API testing. So it's, we okay. won't be productive for them to test it outside on a bike, <laughs> on a bike ride. Uh, but uh, I think at some level, you know, there there are people that are, if every every team kind of have a different focus and, you know, mm-hmm. we try our best to have the right people on the right team. Mm-hmm. There are teams that really need more of a, we just need somebody to ride their bike all the time and give us the mm-hmm. feedback and goes under a bridge 10 times to make sure that the GPS is still. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there's going to be people that do that. There's also going to be mm-hmm. people that, you know, they're they're going to open, you know, Postman and they're going to run tests and they're going to make sure that everything is green and they're going to, you know, write Groovy or, or mm-hmm. JavaScript mm-hmm. or what, whatever, whatever the stack is that they're working on. So there's not a... We do events of uh, let's all go out and ride, but it's like more company wide. Mm-hmm. It goes back to okay. the, mm-hmm. getting ready to launch a product. Everybody has a device. Help us, help us find all the issues. Help us get the feedback mm-hmm. that we. Mm-hmm. Okay, so in the end, it's it's software testing as we all do. You know, working in sprints or Kanban and agile ways. You know, prioritizing the work and then yeah, okay. Exactly. I, 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 I imagine that one. And speaking of tools, anything that you're using and that you that you can share with with the community, like from a test automation point of view, any specifically, or is there some some setup that you found that what was helpful for you to also cover end to end testing, for example? Is there something that you can that you can share? Yeah. So uh, in general, I have always been on a, more on the open source side. So we do use. Mm-hmm. We do use Appium for a lot of our mobile automation. Uh, we do uh, we follow BDD on the automation side as far, mm-hmm. but we that doesn't really flow into the requirements. It's kind of like we we use BDD so we can communicate better what automation is doing. Uh, let's just put it mm-hmm. this way. Uh, mm-hmm. There are you know there is a web and there are APIs that are our framework are mm-hmm. pretty much standard across the board right okay. like somebody okay. makes a change unit tests are running you know goes into a build all of your ui tests are running everything passed merged mm-hmm. uh, but they're also on the embedded world which is a more it's not that as well communicate nobody really says what they're doing with automation on the embedded world at least at least as far as i know it it's more of a working with hardware and working across other teams mm-hmm. what kind of tests do we need to automate to test the longevity mm-hmm. of a hardware device so it starts with that so it could really be that we have a you know a, a, a device on and off like a a, a kicker bike mm-hmm. which device that tilts we literally mm-hmm. had a kicker mm-hmm. bike tilting for months and months and months that was driven by an automated test and that was testing the longevity mm-hmm. of the there's that sort of test, but there's also the mm-hmm. typical, typical automation test that will validate that the code is working as expected. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. for those kind of things, we need we we run them in our in our own lab. So there is a lab that has mm-hmm. GPS devices, watches, computers, boards for kickers. We installed firmware there. We validate that the installation was successful and there was nothing broken. Mm-hmm. We validate that. The device is still broadcasting Bluetooth and all of that stuff. 
Uh, so again, follows the same principle, but it has to run in real hardware. Uh, yeah. It's yeah. probably a slower process because all hardware needs to be up and running. And it's a little bit limited on, on scope because, you know, we cannot have a robot yeah. running in, on yeah. a kicker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Definitely, yeah. A, but, yeah. But speaking, speaking of environments and also one thing that's coming to my mind is like the, the different temperatures. I mean, do you also do some some hardware tests in, let's say, like really cold environments and also like humid environments or hot environments? Because, I mean, speaking of dryly, uh, of cyclists or so, and when they go like on hot places, this has impact on on the devices, right? Is there anything that you can share? Uh, so it's actually it's actually funny because uh, so we again all of those things are we don't do it for every product. It's it's mm -hmm. more about when it's a concern from a team, from sports science, from data science, from hardware, mm -hmm. from electrical mm -hmm. engineers. Uh, we we recently had a uh, we recently had to do for for a product that we develop uh, like a, a hot hot environment and cold environment uh, test, which was a chamber here in, in Georgia. And somebody had to go there physically with the device <laughs> and ride for a couple of hours, hot temperature, cold temperature. Uh, and that was, again, you know, like that goes back into, that was a tester that really, really, really loves riding his bike, right? Like not a lot of people. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I can't imagine. But but this also that brings one thing to my mind. You you are have really healthy uh, colleagues, right? <laughs> really uh, really well, sporty and uh, well trained. <laughs> yes, but at the same time, we we get in a lot of we get in a lot of accidents, I guess, and that spiked up our insurance oh. a little bit. <laughs> just just kidding. Okay. Anybody That's that knows how, how how health insurance work mm -hmm. uh, work in the states yeah. will understand the joke. <laughs> okay that 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 was already a really uh, great insight into the work at at Wahoo and I have one more question one last question is like sure. was there like any funny crazy bug that you have found in your time at Wahoo that say okay that was particularly just connected to a device or I mean something that you have never expected I mean you you mentioned already that this person putting a Wahoo element on a ski Right, I mean, this is crazy. I mean, it's not particularly a bug, but it's a crazy moment. But is there anything that comes to your mind that that's worth sharing? Oh man, that's a good question, and I I don't think I have a. So I'll I'll tell you I'll tell you one thing. Um, I I logged into my account the other day, and I noticed that I have a history of like the same workout every day for like a month, mm -hmm. and I like I I wasn't paying attention before, but like suddenly I saw. I saw the same workout populated again and again and again. I thought it was a bug. So I went in the cloud. I started checking the logs. I opened, I opened Kibana. I went crazy. I started like changing my account, authorizing, deauthorizing. It ended up that my father-in-law was here for, for a month and he logged into <laughs> my, my iPad and took, took, took the credentials with him and he was using our product. <laughs> he didn't tell me anything. But it wasn't a bug. But, uh, yeah, that's the best story I got, so... But, yeah. but but I think I could I can imagine it was a moment of like self like self doubt okay what is going yeah, on yeah, here, yeah. right so I mean like, is it just me I, am I stupid <laughs> it, it's kind of tricky when you use the stuff that you work on on your day to day right like yeah and that's yeah. that's what yeah. that's what like one of the challenges that people have is like you know, I, 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 I go for a ride or I, I, I ride indoors and I'll probably have like three or four apps and devices connected on me, like startups, heart rate monitors, power meters, <laughs> and I look like a robot. Right? But uh, it's when something doesn't work, it's not about like, I cannot just go on my ride. I need to troubleshoot mm -hmm. that thing and I need to talk to somebody mm -hmm. about the issue that I'm seeing. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's... Yeah. It takes a little bit the fun out of it, but it takes a little bit time until you get used to it, and then it's fine. Mm -hmm. But in the beginning, it's really you know, I found the motivation to jump on my bike, and suddenly this thing doesn't work. Like it, it's challenging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can imagine. I mean, it also like it it destroys a bit the joy of of cycling or running if you like just focusing on 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 the testing part of things. I mean, that's I think that's that's also like a. A problem that we have as software testers, right? Using other other products and seeing like the mistakes. Like, no, oh, again, I would love to do like the bug report now, and I, but I just want to do something else. Yeah, 
But yeah, exactly. that's, that's all the, the issue that we have in, the, in our industry. Um, yeah, thank you very much for your time. I mean, I'm, I have a good uh, idea on, on things, uh, what's going on in Behu software testing. It's really great. And I think also like the, the audience um, got some ideas on how Wahoo is doing testing because I, I was thinking in the beginning, oh, it, it looked like it must be like something specific, some challenging stuff. I mean, of course there are challenges, but in the end, it, it comes down to software testing, to software planning, to software development. And I think that the biggest challenge, of course, as you mentioned, is to, to bring everything together, you know, put it into like a little tiny device and see that everything is running smooth and that people can, yeah, can, can do their workouts whenever, where they are. Yeah, that, that's great. Cool. Thank exactly, you. Thanks exactly. for your time. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What a great interview. Thank you, Bill, for your time and answer all my questions and for this nice conversation. If you would like to know more about Bahoo and Bahoo Fitness, follow the link below in the video description to find out more about their product and their services. Follow also the link to uh, Bill's um, LinkedIn profile to send him a contact request or a message. And as always, leave a thumbs up if you like the video, leave a subscription. Thank you and bye-bye.